Isn't it wonderful to hear the voices of little ones, especially when it's your own grandchild? <laughs> oh, it is. Election season's already upon us. Is it, are you like me? Do you feel like the, the uh, midterms just ended last week, week before maybe? <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? The first debate featured almost two dozen people seeking the nomination of the Democratic Party for president. The election isn't until November of next year. Crazy. The convention, party's conventions are over a year away. The Republican one's going to be just down the mountain in Charlotte. And yet we're already inundated with campaign rhetoric, news coverage, and advertisements on social media. I don't think I've recovered from last year's elections and stuff yet. But I think, it seems to me there's a basic strategy that all the campaigns share. I would say it's a 3M strategy. Mission, message, and multiply. Mission, to identify and to claim their mission, their purpose, their reason that you should vote for them and they should be elected. Message, to sharpen and hone their message, their rhetoric, to make it memorable. Think sound bites or positive memes on social media. And then multiply, to multiply the number of times, the number of places, the variety of places that their mission and message is repeated over and over. Jesus uses this same 3M strategy in his ministry in the gospel reading today. Mission, Jesus has already announced his mission, hasn't he? Remember back in Luke, he went home to Nazareth and goes to the synagogue and he opened, they give him the scroll, the prophet Isaiah, and he unrolls it and he reads, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And then Jesus sat down, which is what the rabbis did to teach, and announced to a transfixed synagogue, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And then in fulfilling that mission, Jesus started walking all around Galilee, doing those very things, announcing to those whom the religious and political establishment was crushing under burdensome rules and taxes, that God's kingdom was for them. Releasing captives from their burden of guilt by announcing forgiveness. Releasing those who were captive to physical illness by healing them. Releasing those condemned for their sinful behavior by their villagers by forgiving their sins and releasing those who were scorned as traitors by eating with them. He restored the sight to even somebody who'd been blind from birth. Whoever heard of that, they said. Offering healing from spiritual blindness to religious leaders who had seized the political expediency and forgotten their priestly responsibilities. Announcing that the time had come when God was fulfilling the long-awaited prophecy to send God's own Messiah to restore God's people to a healthy relationship with God. Whew. Now that's quite a long message for the followers of Jesus to go out and announce, much less to expect people to remember. Um, you'll have a test later on that. So, since you couldn't do it either, and we have it written down, Jesus commissions and sends out the 70. He gives them a memorable soundbite, a memorable message that sums everything up. The kingdom of God has come near you. That's what you tell people. Even the people that don't want you in their village. Tell them the kingdom of God has come near you. And then you shake the dust off your feet because you don't want to carry that attitude with you. Move on. The kingdom of God has come near to you. And then the message the message those 35 pairs of followers are to announce is that sound bite. The kingdom of God has come near to you. That's it. Short, sweet, and clear. Those 35 t pairs were the advanced teams for Jesus. Every politician has advanced teams, right? 
those people that go to the, the towns and the places the politician is going to go and, and rouse up the crowds, make announcements, get posters up, news reports out, so that when the politician arrives, there's a crowd and there's an enthusiastic crowd and all of that stuff for their mission. So Luke sends, tells us Jesus appointed 70, put them in pairs and sent them to the towns and villages, places that he was going to go. They were his advance team in his campaign to fulfill his mission. The mission from Isaiah summed up in the healing, the acceptance of local hospitality and consistently announcing the kingdom of God has come near. The kingdom of God has come near. That is to say, in the relationships that we model among you, in the healing that we do in this place, the power and the reconciling presence of God's kingdom has begun to break into the faulty power of this world and its rulers and to scatter that power. The kingdom of God has come near. Now we could spend hours delving into precisely what Jesus meant by the kingdom of God. There'd be differing opinions and we might not always agree. So we'll leave that task to Bible study classes. And you can feel free to sign up for disciple class and get a taste of that. But for now, just check out the parables where Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like. That's an example of what the kingdom's like. Look at the interactions and actions of Jesus with various people. Those on the fringes of society, the sinners, the traitors, the ill, the lame, the lepers. And then my favorite places to look. The Sermon on the Mount in Matthew or the Sermon on the Plain in Luke. Where Jesus lays out his message and expounds on it there. So mission, message, and then multiply it. So once the mission's claimed and named and the message clarified, then the campaign multiplies it. Multiplies the times and the places and the ways that it spread. So here Jesus has 35 teams of people. 35 places that they're going to scatter and go throughout the countryside to those places that he's planning to go. They're going to take the message of Jesus and the announcement of God's kingdom and it spreads much faster than the one person of Jesus could do all by himself and we don't know if he got to all those places or not but he intended to go there and this tried and true method of people going and telling their friends and neighbors about Jesus going and inviting them to come to worship still remains the most effective form of evangelism in our day and age relationships relationships you have a relationship with Jesus you have a relationship with family friends and neighbors so why not invite them into the relationship that you have with Jesus share that invite them to come to church so they might grow deepen their relationship with Jesus you all have neighbors that aren't engaged in church they're already at brunch <laughs> Or they're in line in front of you. Or you saw their cars in the driveway. Or you'll see them there when you get home. So they're all people around us. And in this day and age, even the politicians know the power of pressing the flesh. That social, personal interaction. The power of that. But they also show us the power of social media in multiplying their message, don't they? Now here at Grace, you have the opportunity, the capacity to quickly and simply multiply the message of what God's doing in this community of faith. How many of you are on Facebook? Come on, more than that. I'm, I'm friends with more of you than that, I know. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. We have a Facebook page. Have you liked it? 731 people have liked it. So that's a start. So you can help with, here's the multiplication part. So you get notifications, if you turn them on, of any th mission, activity, event that happens at Grace in your timeline. So share that to your timeline. And in, with a comment, to invite your friends to come and participate or you're excited about it or whatever. For example, 
this week when we put a news post up about helping the Kadori family. I shared that to my Facebook timeline. Now I have a lot of people in those thousand plus friends that are that are not in Hendersonville but from 731 of us that got that original one there's another three or four hundred at least around town that saw it show up and have commented on it. So imagine what would happen if all 731 of us shared some post during the week. Wow. Multiplying the outreach of grace can be that simple. I think uh, sometimes that social media must have been uh, a uh, evangelism tool for us shy Lutherans <laughs> to use. But you know, share those posts. Share an invitation to your friends to register or come Tuesday night and check out Disciple Bible Study. Share the link of one of the, the videos from the youth mission treatment trip and, and talk about how excited you are to, to help that. Share whatever we post with a positive comment and an invitation to your Facebook friends to come and participate, to come and see. But there's also a good thing. Anybody here besides me check in to Grace this morning for worship? It's a great way to tell people that your faith is important. That on Sunday morning, you're at your congregational family for worship. Or any other time you're here. Yeah, I know there are concerns about, oh, but somebody will know I'm not at home. They already know that, friends. And then finally, multiplying that challenge. Um... Social media is not the only way. That's one way that, that reaches a lot of people. But still, as I said earlier, the most effective way to invite people to church, to grow church families, to spread the good news of God's kingdom is personal invitation. It still is. So here's my challenge for each one of you, each one of us. There's about six months left this year. So in the next six months, invite five people to worship with you. Five people, that's it. Not even one a month. I mean, there's no reason that Lutherans should only invite somebody to worship once every 17 years. <laughs> so five people the rest of the year, okay? You know, you know somebody that's not in church, somebody that's not affiliated with the church. We're not wor worrying about people that are involved in a church family actively, but invite them to worship. Invite them to your disciple Bible study or, or something. But five people. Because your relationship is powerful in inviting and encouraging others to know the kingdom of God and experience it. Jesus isn't running for office, but his campaign for his message is to be carried to the ends of the earth. That's our charge. To carry the good news of the kingdom to the ends of the earth. And that's far more important. Far more life changing. Far more unifying than the message of any human politician. So as beloved children of God, as faithful followers of Jesus, at the end of every worship service, we're sent out, we're commissioned to go out. To transform lives through Christ with the message that the kingdom of God has come near. That Jesus loves you. Come and see. Come and experience it. And to multiply that by the number of people who share that message. Who share those invitations each and every day. In the things you say and the things you do. So go and spread the good news. Amen.